Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about single slit fraction. Now the first things I want to draw to your attention are the assumptions you make when we're working with single slit diffraction. Because this is exactly the sort of thing that the exam board likes asking questions with to check that you've got full understanding of it. So let's look at our two assumptions that we've got here. We've got the beams of light coming in before they hit the slit are parallel. And we say we can say that with confidence because what we say is that they're from a distant source of a distant source of the light photons. So that's the first assumption to make. The second one we make is that the light is monochromatic and coherent. So what does that mean exactly? Well what it means is that the waves must have the same wavelength and frequency. So we we assume all of the, the, the light waves that are coming in have the same wavelength and frequency and that the phase difference between them is going to be constant. Okay. Now the problem with that is is if you're just using a light bulb or something like that those aren't usually coherent. So what you have to for a single slit diffraction experiment or to set it up you're going to want to use laser light because you know that the photons from a laser room have a constant phase difference and they're in exactly have exactly the same wavelength and frequency which is exactly what you need for this one. Okay. So the next thing I want to draw you into is up here on the top right. And now this is the equation that we're going to be talking about. Now you might be thinking, well doesn't isn't that the double slit uh, experiment equation? Well the answer is it's it's both, but uh, this it requires a little bit more explanation for the single slit. Now usually this S on the bottom of the right hand side means obviously is your slit separation. Now you don't need to know exactly how this works but a single slit basically effectively has a slit separation. But obviously if it's only a one slit that's always going to remain the same so if you change all the, load the different variables your slit separation for this is going to stay constant. Okay. So you don't have to worry about that, but you just yeah, you just have to know that a single slit one still has an effective slit separation. So what we've got over here on the left hand side, we've got our W, which is our fringe spacing. So let's write that one because it's important. That's our fringe spacing. So if you look on the screen at the fringes, obviously that's something that can change the spacing between them. We've got this lambda up here which we always use to represent a wavelength and we've got d which is our distance to our screen and we usually keep that constant during the single slit experiment as well so you don't have to worry about that either so all you really need to know is the link between the wavelength and the fringe spacing so obviously if we increase lambda or increase our wavelength by say moving towards the red end of the spectrum you're going to increase your fringe spacing so let's take a look at the diagram here. So on the left hand side we've got our monochromatic source so from some sort of red laser light here. It's approaching this slit and we're saying that this slit separation must be close to or approaching the wavelength of the light. And what you have coming through is first of all you have this central maximum. Now this central, this fringe that you would see on the screen is the brightest. So if you see a graph like this one here, what this is actually showing is the intensity of the light at different, at different places. So with single slit you'll always find the brightest fringe right in the middle is, yeah, so the central fringe is the brightest and you'll find some less bright fringes either side of them. Obviously what we're talking about in the equation is the fringe spacing. So we're basically looking at the distance between the cent the center to the ne the center of the next one. Okay, so let's have a go at sketching what this would look like if we instead of using red switched to a, a coherent monochromatic source of say blue or ultraviolet or something like that. Now your actual intensity shouldn't end up changing. So the central maximum is going to be just as high. What you'll find is you'll get a much narrower because effectively your 
wavelength has got smaller, which means your fringe spacing is getting smaller. So to ha allow it to happen, your fringes need to be... Ooh, I've got, I got a bit overexcited with that one. Your fringes are going to be... The, the centre, the maximum on them are going to be much closer together. So if we look at that. So if we mark on here our new fringe spacing, you can see that compared to the red wave before, the fringe spacing has got much smaller and that's something you'd expect to see for a single slit diffraction pattern. And the final thing I want to talk about when we're talking about this single slit surface, obviously I said at the beginning that we're going to want to use a laser light. So one of the favourite sort of questions they like to ask about this is, well, what are the safety implications of lasers? Like, what are the risks? What are the hazards? And obviously what they're looking for here is that you identify, the, obviously, the risk with lasers is if they get in someone's eyes. So in this sort of question, they're usually a two-mark so our question, because what they're looking for is you identify the hazard, so the risk of damaging someone's eyes if it get so, and then the step you take to protect them against them, so you'd make sure to keep it well away from people's eyes would be your safety precaution. So you've got those two steps, which is the two marks. I just thought it would be useful to draw that to your attention.